Often in your Django applications, you're going to have to send AJAX requests to the server. Now these are often GET requests, but sometimes you want to send data to the server for that data to be stored in a database or to perform or trigger some kind of action. And for that, you often send a POST request. What we're going to do in this video is demonstrate how to send these AJAX POST requests alongside protecting your application with CSRF protection from Django. So there are some extra steps that you need to perform when you're sending these POST requests. And that's because POST requests, as well as PUT and DELETE requests, they are considered unsafe HTTP methods. And Django, by default, is going to ask for that CSRF token in the request. So we're going to show how to do that in this video. What we have here is a simple Django application. And this contains some articles. What we want to do is send a POST request when we hit the Publish button. And that's going to publish this imaginary article. We'll show how to do this with normal JavaScript and fetch requests. And then later in the video at the end, we're going to show how to do it with HTMX. Now, if you want to support the channel before we get started, check out this coffee page. And thanks very much to everybody that's contributed to this. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. So if we go back to our application, we have these articles. And I'm going to open up VS Code, where we have a Django model here called Article. So an article consists of three fields. We have a title, a description, and the published field, which is a Boolean field. We're going to work with that one in this video because we want to send a POST request to actually publish an article. That's the purpose of what we're going to build. Now, if we go to views.py, we have an index view here, and we have a key in the context called articles, and it's fetching all article objects from the database and rendering a template called index.html. So let's go to that template, and what we have here is a table, and the styles are coming from Daisy UI, and we're listing out some details for each article in this template for loop. If we scroll down here, and I'm going to minimize the terminal, we have this TD here in the table, and this contains a button, and it's the button that says publish. That's what we want to target in this video. So let's build the example. What we're going to do is when this button is clicked, we're going to send a POST request using some JavaScript. So I have a script tag here, and we're going to start by writing some JavaScript in this video to target this button here. So notice that the button has a class of publish button. So what we're going to do is we're going to get all of these. And remember, there's going to be many articles, so many buttons that say publish. And one thing to note before we go on is that if the article.published property, if that evaluates to false, in other words, if the article is not published, only then is the button going to be shown. If the article is published, it's not going to be shown, as you can see on the user interface at the top. For this quantum computing article, we don't have the publish button because it is published. But for all unpublished articles, we're going to get those in the JavaScript. So let's start with that. And we're going to use the document object, which has a function called query selector all. And we're looking for articles, or we're looking for buttons, sorry, with the class of publish button. Now that's going to find all of those. And then we can use the for each function in JavaScript. And for each button, we have a callback function here. So what we're going to do is attach an event listener to the button using button.addEventListener. And of course, we're listening for the click event. And when we get that, another callback function, when the button is actually clicked, this is the callback that's going to be run. Now to start with, let's just console.log e.target. And that's going to list out the target, in other words, the button that was actually clicked. And we can go back to our application now. I'm going to refresh this. And I'm going to bring up the developer tools on the browser. And notice that this is not really a responsive application, not ideal. But what we can do is we can scroll over and we can click publish and notice that the button appears. That's the target of the event. So if we go back to the code here, e.target is going to reference the button that was clicked. Now, when we click the button, if we scroll up here, we're inside this template for loop. And this button represents the publish button for one article. Now, we need to get the primary key of the article that we want to actually publish. And I'm going to make use of data properties in HTML. So we're going to have a data property on the button, and that's going to be data article ID. And we're going to set that to the primary key of the article, so article.pk. Now, if we save that and go back to the application, I'm going to refresh the page, and we can inspect one of the buttons that we have here. And notice now there's a data article ID attribute on the element, and it's set to that primary key. Now, there are other ways you might do this, but I'm going to take the data attribute approach. And once we have that, we can access the attribute in JavaScript. Now, I'm going to open up this Mozilla documentation, which I'll leave a link to below the video. If you want to read the values of data attributes in JavaScript, there's a simple way to do that, and that's to get the data set property. So if we look at the example here, we get an element that has an ID of electric cars, and that gives us back a DOM element, and that has a data set property. And we can then access the name of the property, for example, index number. We're going to do that in our code. So let's go back to VS Code and go back to the script tag. And underneath the console log here, Let's create a primary key variable for the article for the button that's been clicked. And that's going to be equal to e.target. And then we're going to access the dataset property of that target element, which is the button. 
And if we scroll up to the button, we have an article ID here. So I'm going to copy that and we can reference that using dot notation. So we're accessing that property on the dataset object. But because we can't use this dash here, the dot dataset property is going to use this kind of notation here. And that's standard in JavaScript. So it replaces that dash and it uppercases the first letter of the next part of the word. Now what I'm going to do is just move this console log down and we're going to console log the PK. And let's just make sure we're getting the correct one on the page. So let's go back here and refresh. And again, I'm going to bring up the console. When we click publish here, notice the primary key of two and three for the second one. So it's getting the correct primary key and it's printing that to the console. So we now have the primary key. We need to send a fetch request, an Ajax post request to the server. And that's basically going to send a request to an endpoint that's going to publish the article with that primary key. So let's go back to VS Code. What I'm going to do underneath here is define a URL that we're going to send the post request to. And I'm going to use a template expression in JavaScript. And you can do that using those back ticks. And we're going to send this to a URL called publish-article slash. And then we're going to put the primary key value into this string. So for example, that might send a post request to publish article slash two slash three or whatever the primary key of the given article is. Underneath that, we can then send the fetch request to the URL. And the second parameter to fetch is an object of properties for the request. And this one is going to be a post request. So we're going to specify the method as post. Now that's all I want to do for now. I'm going to save this and we're going to see the CSRF problem here. Now, before we do that, we're going to check that this URL does exist in the application. So I have got this URL here. It's publish article slash and then the primary key. And we're using the int path converter here. If you want to know more about those, check out the video we released very recently on that. This is going to call a view called publish article. And at the moment, this publish article view does nothing. It's just passing. And this is going to require a post request. So you can't send a get request or any other type to this view. So let's try this out. If we go back to our application, if we click publish here, obviously nothing is happening at the moment on the front end. But if we open up the developer tools, notice in the console that the server has responded with a status of 403 forbidden. Now we can get more detail on this if we go to the terminal here where the server is running. And notice it says forbidden CSRF token missing. So what this means is that when we send a post request, we need to send the CSRF token. And Django requires that on the back end. So post requests are considered unsafe methods. And if we go to settings.py, the reason this is happening is because in the middleware list, we have this middleware here called CSRF view middleware. So this requires a present and correct CSRF middleware token for post requests that have a CSRF cookie. And you can use this in conjunction with the CSRF token template tag as well if you're using forms. Now we could remove this middleware, but that's probably not the best practice. We want to make sure we're protected against these cross-site request forgery attacks. So how do we actually send this CSRF token in an Ajax post request? Now I'm going to open the Django documentation and again I'll leave a link to this page below the video. This is on using CSRF protection with Ajax. Now one way you can send this is using a header in the HTTP request and it's this header here, xcsrf token. And we set the value of that HTTP header to the value of the token. But of course you must get the CSRF token in order to do that. And there's different ways of doing it and that depends on whether or not these two settings are enabled. CSRF use sessions and CSRF cookie HTTP only. By default, both of these are false. And if that's the case, we have a function provided to us by the Django documentation to get the CSRF token from the cookie. Now I'm going to copy this function and let's go back to VS Code and go to index.html. And at the top here, I'm just going to paste that into this particular code. And let's look at the code itself. So what we've got is a function called get cookie. And this is going to extract the cookies from the document by splitting on this character here. And then we've got a for loop iterating over each cookie that was found. And we're looking for cookies that begin with the name that was passed into this function. So if we go down below the function, notice the name being passed in is CSRF token. That's what Django is going to send back as the key in that cookie. So it's trying to find that and then return that value to the caller. Now we can see this cookie if we go back to the application. I'm going to go to the network tab here and I'm going to refresh this page. And if we go to this here, localhost, this is the request response for the request to the Django application. If we go to the cookies that were sent back, notice we have a CSRF token here. And the value that you see here is the value that we're trying to extract from this response. Now you can only extract this if these settings are false. For example, if CSRF cookie HTTP only is set to true, you won't be able to use this function on the client side to get that cookie. Now with all of that, what I'm going to do is go back to the application and we're going to console log what we've got here, and that's the CSRF token. So let's do that just now. And I think that's auto filled something, so I'm going to replace it with the variable name. 
We can then go back to our Django application and I'm going to go back to the console and let's refresh this page and hopefully we're going to see the token appearing here and indeed we do see that. So we can actually grab this token and attach it to the HTTP POST request. So let's go back to VS Code and we're going to go down to where we're sending the fetch request and that's here. And for the object here of properties what we're going to do is we're going to add a headers property. So the method is going to be POST and we're going to add a second key here to the object called headers. And we're going to create an object here and we're going to have a key with the name of XCSRF token and that's what Django's documentation told us to send. We can change the name of this header if we want using Django settings but there's not really any reason to do so so we're going to use this and we can then set it to the value of that variable CSRF token. And with that we can go back to the application. I'm going to refresh this page and if we click one of the publish buttons here notice we're getting a different error now and that's an internal server error. So the Ajax POST request can now be sent because we're sending this header containing the token. The problem is now something else and that's that the view doesn't return an HTTP response object. So let's very quickly go to views.py and we're going to remove the pass statement. We're going to fetch the article based on the primary key that's been passed in using the get object or 404 function and passing this as the lookup. We can then take that article and set its published property to true and then save that article to the database. So that's going to update the published property to true in the underlying database and then we can return something and for now I'm going to return a JSON response and let's just say status and we can set that to published and if we go to index.html after the fetch request has been sent we can add a promise here to handle what comes back from the server. So we use the dot then function here and we convert the response from JSON to JavaScript objects and let's just console.log that data that comes back from the server. So we're going to go back to the application when we click the publish button here, notice we get the JSON appearing on the right hand side. And the status is published, but notice that the user interface is not updating. So for that bottom article, it still says that it's not published here, but if we refresh the page, notice that it now appears to be published. So that method did update the database, but there was no user interface updates going on. And I want to note that in a real application, if we go back to views.py, you wouldn't just allow anyone to send a post request to change these kind of statuses. So you would have things like user roles and authentication built into this functionality. Right now it's completely open just for the demonstration purposes in this video. Now if we go back to index.html in the fetch request, after we've successfully got a response, we could update the user interface at this point. And that should be to reflect the fact that the article whose button we've clicked is now published. But when we start updating the document and doing these kind of DOM mutations, that's when I think it's a good time to start thinking about HTMX. And if you've watched any videos on this channel, you've seen probably something before where I've worked with HTMX. So I want to very quickly refactor this entire example to work with HTMX. So let's go back to VS Code and I'm going to remove all of this JavaScript code that we wrote. But before I do so, just remember if you're using a fetch request and you need to attach that CSRF token, this is the way to do that using the headers within the options object that you're using for that fetch request. So let's now remove all of this JavaScript code. We're no longer going to need any of this. And we can remove the script tag as well. And I think this is going to highlight how simple using HTMX can be for these kind of tasks. Now on the button, we don't even need this data attribute anymore. What we're going to replace that with is the HX post attribute. And we're going to use the Django URL template tag. And we're going to send the request to this URL that we have here. It's got a name of publish article. So let's add that in here. And we need to also add article.pk. So it's going to attach that primary key to the URL that you see here. And we're going to update the DOM when we get a response. So I'm going to set an HX target here. And basically this table data element is within a table row and we want to return a new table row representing the published article. So we're going to target the closest table row using closest TR. And we want to replace the entire content. So I'm going to use HX swap here and we're going to set that to outer HTML. So the new data coming back from the server is going to replace the entire outer HTML of that table row. And what I'm going to do is take this table row here and we're going to extract that into an HTML partial. So let's create a template here on the left hand side and that's going to be called article row.html and we can paste that in there. So we've extracted that because we're going to return this partial as a fragment from the server after we've successfully updated the publish status. And then inside this template for loop here, when the page first loads, what we can do is include our new fragment. So it's article row.html. We can then save this and let's go back to the application and just make sure everything is still working and it's still loading fine on that initial load. Now we're going to run into the CSRF error again here. So if we click this publish button here, 
notice that we get the 403 forbidden and the server logs here at the bottom are going to tell us that we need that CSRF token in order to send a post request. So how do we attach the token when we're using HTMX? Now the way that I typically do this is using the Django HTMX package and it's a tip from that package. So we don't actually need to install this but we can copy this snippet of code and again I'll leave a link to this just below the video and we can go back to base.html and we can replace the body tag with what we have here. So we have hx headers which is going to add whatever we have as headers here to the request and we're setting that same header that we had before x csrf token and we're setting it to this value. So the csrf token template variable is added to all Django templates by that middleware so we can access that here and add it as a header and that means that when htmx sends a request it's going to add that by default. So just to hammer that home this particular variable here is added to the context of every single template by that CSRF view middleware. So let's test this out again. If we go back to the application, I'm gonna refresh the page. And when we click publish here, we're gonna see something rather unexpected maybe. So I'm gonna hit publish here and notice that the row appears to have disappeared. But what's actually happened is that the row has been replaced, not with a valid HTML fragment, but with the JSON data that we're getting back from the view. So the last step in making this work successfully is to go back to views.py and rather than returning a JSON response, we can use Django's render function and we're going to return that fragment that we created called article row.html. And the context for that requires an article. So let's add that just now. And it's going to be the article that we fetched in this Django view on the lines above. So I'm going to go back to the page and I'm going to close the dev tools and refresh this. Now we have no unpublished articles. So I'm going to go to the Django admin just now and I'm just going to unpublish all of these. So let's untick this button here. And here's an article about climate change. Let's unpublish that as if we were the American government. And finally, this one here, let's also unpublish this one. Now, once that's done, we can go back to the application and notice we have the buttons for all of these. And hopefully this is going to work seamlessly now. So when we click the publish button, notice that we get back the new row. And this time the published flag is ticked and the button is removed. And we can do this for the other ones as well. So we've refactored this and we now send the post request, the Ajax post request using HTMX. And because we're now updating the document with a fragment from the server, this is something that HTMX really shines at. So we've added that here to make that easier. But we also saw earlier in the video how to send a normal fetch request and attach that CSRF token using the X CSRF token HTTP header. So that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, check out this coffee page that we have. We've got this linked in the description and thanks very much to everyone that's contributed. And if you have any more requests for similar content, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you soon in the next video.